It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So, I just did a quick video on the PCB for the Big Switch series, and I thought, you know, before I actually go and solder my Big Switch into this, I just do another quick video showing the modifications that I've actually done to the Big Switch. And that way, once it goes in, you know, uh, I'm not really going to be able to crack it open and show off what I've done. Now, the Big Switch itself, by default is a noisy noisy switch and when I say noisy I mean it's noisy now you're gonna have to excuse me because I didn't think ahead just like I did with the other video because I didn't have a unmodded switch for comparison so in two ticks I'll be right back okay so I'm back and I have another box uh, so this one is unmodded and we will uh, show the differences with them relatively soon. Now I'm just going to of course switch on to the desktop so we can check it out. So this is my, my modded switch and uh, then I've got my unmodded switch here. Now I'm not quite sure what's happened with my camera. I think I've just lost a bit of table edge or something so I'm just going to tweak that a little bit. All right. So, how are we going to tell the difference between these two? Uh, I might just get a bit of tape and then I can mark it with the tape so we know it's a little bit easier that way. Good old mask and tape. Right, so that's my modded switch and then the one without the tape is just straight out of the box. So, there's, there's my straight out of the box one. Unmodded, unmodded. Right, box is over there. So... You can't really tell straight away by looking at these what I've actually done between them. Um, and it's kind of a good thing simply because, you know, it shouldn't be super obvious. Um, the things that I have done is primarily relating to how it sounds and not so much how it feels because I haven't done any lubrication work on them at all. So I'm just going to adjust my mic a little bit so uh, we, can, we can get a, an idea of what's happening sound wise okay so the microphone's obviously blocking the camera but um, the first one I'm going to do here if I can get the camera to recognize so there's no tape on the top of this this is the default switch including bottoming out so it's very strong it's very clicky there's very hard plastic contact sounds and there's a bit of spring resonance happening there as well. Okay, so now I'm going to put that one down. And the one over here that you can see now, just fuzzy in the background, is the one with tape. And that's the one that I've modded. So, let's hear what that sounds like with a full bottoming out as well. Doesn't sound very different to the naked ear, does it? Still got that spring sort of resonance to it, but if I do them side by side, that's the unmodded, and that's the modded. The pitch is actually quite different, and the springiness, the, the length of that spring from the spring sound, has actually changed. So let's just have a quick look at what I've done internally. Just going to move that out of the way and readjust my mic again. So, there's the uh, unmodded and modded. The tone is different. You can hear the tone is different. Right. So, we don't really need to open the unmodded one because that's not going to be really necessary for the purpose of comparison. And I'm just going to pop that back into the box. The, the modifications are really quick and easy in a way. In a way. What you will need though is kind of like a small screwdriver like this. Um, I don't have a Phillips head one, otherwise I would have used it to do the screws on my uh, other video. But the flat head, the minus head actually works better anyway. So I'm going to take the, the cap off and I've modified it in three places. Three places. The first is the bottom of the stem, the sides of the stem, and then the actual click bar itself. 
and all of these three actions have resulted in changing the tone and sound but not really the feel of the big switch so at the bottom of the stem you're not really going to be able to see it very well probably no it's not going to focus because it wants to focus on the keyboard underneath it is a bit of dampening now by default the actual switch itself so all I've done is I've just gone into the side and I've lifted. Uh, it gets a little bit tricky because these these switches are so big and they're so stiff that when you do start the lift, it does want to pop back in. So you do kind of need to get a bit of a uh, force on that to, to stop it from popping back in. But if you're very careful, there you go. It pops right open. So I'm just going to take the top off there and let's pull the stem out. So what I've done is I've actually added a bit of plastic on the bottom of that stem. Now this is bump-on material. So I had a sheet of bump-ons and it had some stuff that was in the middle in between each one of the bump-ons. And I just cut and trimmed it so it actually fit on the bottom of the stem and because it was already self-adhesive it was easy to put on. So that gives it a bit of a, a cushioning to it. It's still quite a firm plastic but that in itself reduces the hard hard sort of ABS plastic to plastic contact against the actual shell, actually against the housing of the switch. Now, you could probably get rid of that contact entirely if you decide to cut the bottom of the switch off. I probably wouldn't advise that, I mean, bottom of the housing off where the stem is, only because then you are compromising the sort of protective housing from the elements and then you're going to have dust and other crap getting inside your switch which you don't really want um, of course with this now with the stem out you can also see the linearity of the switch profile the the actual ramp there it's fairly straight there's nothing to it um, and then there's the actual mechanism here on that side bit which is what contacts and flicks the click bar however the second modification is on the stems where I've basically done what the silent switches like the gator on silent switches do which is they've got a bit of material at the top of the stem so when it comes back up it's actually contacting that material against the inside of the housing so I've actually trimmed it to fit on both sides and I've put it there as well it's once again that same bump on material now it's interesting because the switch is actually kind of already lubed I don't know if you're going to be able to catch it on this because once again it's trying to focus below it on the, the keyboard but the big switch actually comes pre-lubed not in the standard place which is the sides where the sliding sort of rail is but actually on these stem components and they're lubed against the metal leaf contacts so where they contact so the two bits on the side is actually where it's lubed so that's really really interesting now the third modification that I've actually done to this switch is the click bar itself and that underneath the click bar so I don't know if that's going to show very well yep okay so there's the there's the plastic of just take that off let me see if I can find a an object to point with radio bit of a 3d printing filament so that bit there is actually part of the housing that clear strip there at the bottom of that is once again bump on sheet material and what I've done there is by putting that there as the click bar comes up and flicks against it the metal is not flicking on the hard plastic of the housing it's actually flicking against the slightly softer material that is the bump on material I've also applied a bit of masking tape as you can see here to the ramp so that the movement of that click bar that that actual sliding action is not as sort of hard plastic scraping sound against that ramp but rather it's a little bit more sort of dampened and adds a bit of a shh to it against the tape now if you really wanted to you could probably lube that ramp and that would also decrease some of that that contact sound so overall it was a, a relatively simple mod now yes i probably could put a lot of lube in here um i think that's probably not super effective in the sense that you would need to use a lot of lube compared to just a couple of like a blob that they've put on each of those leaf springs 
I don't know if that's going to show up very well, but you can kind of see there's like a bit of gleaming, sort of clearish material there. Well, that's actually the lube that they've put in. So there you go. Just It's very easy to mod to do that. And once again, it's also very easy to open the switch if you did want to put, you know, thick lube into the sides there just to make that whole switch uh, experience a little bit smoother, a little bit neater. So of course, reconstruction is just this fat spring into the middle, stem down into the actual uh, side bits. Actually, I can I can show that that click action. Now, the thing that that click action also does is it actually reduces the length of the the click stroke. So it does mean there's actually less force against that click, which kind of mutes it a little bit. Right here. So switch top back on. Just push it together gently clunk and there we have it switch back together complete so that's um that's just a couple of things that i did to play around and, and actually modify the switch it seems to have worked uh it's you know giving it just a a, a nicer sound i believe i feel it's less sort of harsh plastic contact sound i didn't really like that sound and uh yeah if I have some more material or whatnot, I might try doing that again with the other switches that I've got. So if you're interested, that's something that you can play with or if you want to just crack open your switch and lube it as well. That's it for this video. Of course, there's the other video where I go through about that PCB. Um, and as I've mentioned also, I'll probably do a interest check and offer a group buy if people are interested in getting that PCB to do a double plate mount. I mean, a double PCB mount just like that and have a working switch that they can program as a one button macro pad. So thanks for coming along and checking out the video. Of course, if you like the stuff, hit like. If you want somebody else to check it out because you think they might be interested, hit share. And if you somehow come across this video and you're not a subscriber of The Board Podcast, would love and appreciate your subscription. So as always, until next time, happy clacking.